Good morning to you from the very quiet Ferguson Hill Campground here in Cypress Hills Interprovincial Park. Yes, Interprovincial Park because it spans both Alberta and Saskatchewan. So it's not just a provincial park like most of the places that we visited. And uh, today's going to be a non-travel day, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be some windshield time. There's a lot of things we want to check out around here. And so we're going to do some exploration in this area and see a few sites. And uh, then tomorrow we carry on and we push towards Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. But for today, let's check out Cypress Hills and the surrounding area. A little hard to tell from up here, but if you look through the trees, there's actually a lake down there so it's like a lakeview campground the campground has obviously been here quite a while the sites are quite small so they're um, not something that would fit a lot of today's big rigs kind of thing so that's kind of nice. I think that's one of the reasons why it's not that busy. The other campgrounds in the area here are quite busy, but not this one. I mean, you can even see here, they still have a tag on this one from, they departed on June the 19th, which was, I think uh, that's like four or five days ago. And no one's even been by to take the tag up or uh, no one else has come along to use that site. And this site here, you can see how many or how much the dandelions and things have grown on the parking pad. So it's almost uh, like that site never gets any use. Another site here that's quite overgrown. They're obviously doing some maintenance. You can tell they just cut down some trees here right at the entrance. Not sure if the tree was in danger of falling or if they maybe have a plan of making that site a little bit wider but many of these sites are like i said the driveways are just completely overgrown as if they don't see much traffic which is too bad i actually really like this campground and of course there's our setup, Bella the Bowler, ready for another day with us. And Mabel just poked her head out the back there to see what's going on. Yes, Mabel, we're back. Okay, well, we have started our exploration. We went north of the park a little ways and checked out an old uh, prairie one-room schoolhouse. Uh, it was on private property, so we could only see it from the road. So I didn't record any video there, but I'll throw a photo up so you can take a look at it. But we're now working our way back into Cypress Hills Provincial Park, and it is cold and windy today. It's really cloudy. I think we're going to get a lot of rain. The high is only going to be about 10 degrees Celsius. so. Not exactly the summer weather we were hoping for this trip, but we got to take what we can get. This was a really actually good place for a stop. There was a geocache here as well. So that gave us good reason to uh, come in. You can see we're up here at the North Welcome area. There's an awful lot of places to explore. Here's Ferguson Hill where we're camped. And I really want to go and check out some of these areas down a little bit to the south and perhaps take a drive up towards Reeser Lake and uh, see where we go. So a few little bits of interesting notes. Um, there's some of the highlights down here where it shows um, Cypress Hills is one of the few places in Canada that was not covered by glaciers during the last ice age. 
We are Canada's first interprovincial park. And uh, yeah, Fort Walsh is a little too far away. We won't be seeing that on this trip. But lots of things to see and explore. So we better get back out there. Can't wait to get back in the truck and get into some heat. It is cold out today. So inside St. Margaret's Church, give you a little look around here. Emily signing us in at the guest book and getting a little bit of the history of the church. I really love the stained glass. Let's see if we can get the exposure right so you can see it. There we go. Mountain Bluebird. Here's some images of the church prior to restoration. As you can see, built in 1908, restored in 1992. Very quiet here, just the sound of birds, the wind, and the flags flapping in the breeze. Number of interesting memorials. Little history sheet inside the church mentioned that the building was used as a school in the 1940s when the local school burnt down. At that time there was no insulation or electricity in the building. Both of those things were added when the um, building was renovated in 1992. Mentions here that the church opened June the 28th 1908. So at the time of our recording here, we're just a few days shy of 114 years, if my math is correct. Apparently the last regular service in the church was held in 1969. So we have set our sights on another geocache. This one says it's at, it's called Prairie Pinnacle, and it's apparently at the highest point between the Rocky Mountains and Labrador, highest point in Canada. And we knew that the Cypress Hills were the highest landmass uh, between those two locations, but apparently this is at the highest point of the high points. And the road's gotten a little bit narrower, and um, the good news is, is it still looks like a maintained road, so even if it does rain, I don't think we're going to need four-wheel drive unless things get a lot worse. Give you an idea of what we're going through here. Not much gravel on here, but it's just a light rain. I'm pretty confident at this point we're going to be okay. Like I said, unless things take a, a nasty turn. Well, we got off the gravel. Now we're on to a uh, paved section of road. And it's funny, the sign says maximum of 60K, but uh, this road's pretty rough. I'm only doing about 50, and that's fast enough. But other vehicles out here so it felt like we were so isolated and alone there for a minute but apparently we're not 
Took a quick stop here along the way at Horseshoe Canyon. Talking about how this area escaped glaciation during the last ice age. Also really interesting here, all the people who have carved their name into the uh, wood. I don't know what it is about the almost universal human need to leave your mark on something to let people know that you were once here. But everywhere you look, there's carvings and initials in the wood here. It's quite, uh, quite fascinating, actually. I've always kind of wondered what the demarcation is between, you know, something becoming historically interesting and vandalism. It's a very fine line, but normally when I see people marking things up, it bothers me. But standing here and seeing all this, it doesn't for some reason. I mean, I'm not going to add to it, but it's just, uh, to me, it's become part of the story of this area now. Our road has once again taken a bit of a turn into different type territory, but uh, seems to be okay, seems to be fairly solid right now. It's not really raining very much. In fact, I can probably turn those wipers off for now. So we have about three kilometers to go down this to get to where we want to be, to the Prairie Pinnacle. So we'll keep seeing what happens again. Hopefully nothing takes a turn too nasty for us. We don't do actual off-roading and, you know, a full-size Ford F-150 isn't the most practical off-road vehicle anyway, but it's for situations like this where having something with a little bit of clearance, some aggressive tires and four-wheel drive, just that extra peace of mind is really nice. And we're catching up with the road grader here. We're less than a kilometer to the parking area so that's good so if we can't get past him we don't have to follow him for too long i guess the uh, one thing you don't expect out here is a traffic jam and i'm sure he's probably thinking the same thing like really you've got to have somebody come along when i'm grading this like isolated and remote road like what the hell All right, well, as you can tell, we made it. And I'm going to zoom in here. What a view it is. And if my directions are right, those hills you see on the horizon way down there should be the Sweetgrass Hills, which are actually across the border about 100 kilometers away in Montana. You can see all the way to another country from here looks like this used to be an old road at one point as Emily pointed out with the trees growing up in the middle it hasn't been a road for a while but we're here hunting for a geocache the prairie pinnacle geocache that I mentioned earlier oh we thought thought this was it and it was like oh crap there's nothing in it but then just down below here's the container it obviously fell from its hiding spot there, so we got her. Of course, I'm wrong. Oops, there we go, zoom out a little. It's like, those two things do not go together. So this was obviously the original cache, and this must be a replacement that was placed here later when this one went missing. Now the next one that I'm gonna go hunting for here is I know I'm not gonna find it. There was originally a one of Out for the Hunt's brass caps, GC43 F3 for those keeping track at home, hidden up here. 
near the site of an old uh, fire lookout tower. And the fire lookout tower was uh, removed and is actually at a little museum interpretive spot that we're going to check out on our way back. We drove past it on the way in. But uh, the cap apparently was destroyed and no one ever found it. So I'm not expecting to find the cap, but it's very close to the foundations of the old fire lookout tower and I just want to see the old foundation. So that's what we're going to go look for next. Plus, we have lots of time to kill because we're going to be behind Mr. Road Grader there the whole way out. This is the location where the brass cap was. It was supposed to be 0.3 meters above ground level and 20 some meters southwest of a, the center of a lookout tower. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but those four wooden stumps there are all that remain of the lookout tower and the brass cap would have been over in this area somewhere. Given the fact that this used to be a road here, there is a very good opp or opportunity or chance that when they graded this road and pushed a bunch of land out this way that the cap may have been buried. So what may have once been above ground level could very well be well below ground level now. And that happens more than you think. There's been a number of brass caps we've gone hunting for over the years, only to find that the area around them has horribly changed or changed, and uh, there's just no evidence of the cap left at all anymore. So that's what we expected, and that's what we got. But it's nice. I've been wanting to come here for probably 15, 16 years, so it's great to finally be here and see the site of where the cap was. My real interest was in seeing the foundations of the old forestry lookout tower. And you can see the concrete and the maple and the, and the wood pillars still here. So from the looks of it, if I had to guess when they moved the lookout tower, they probably just sawed all four of these off and hauled it away. So we're going to go back towards the um, little uh, fire prevention, forest fire interpretive display where this tower is located and uh, check that out next. So from the highest point in Canada between the Rocky Mountains and Labrador, that's it for now. We'll see you here in a couple minutes. Well, for you, it'll be like a second. For us, it'll be a few minutes because we got to get back past that grater. <laughs> okay. All right, you got to see this or hear this. Okay, I'm finally calm, but I just had a horrifying experience on the porta potty. There was a another porta potty incident where I opened it and I found a dead squirrel inside. This is not quite so bad. So I said, okay, I'm going to use the porta potty as long as there's not a dead squirrel. Open the door. Seems clean. Seems all right. Let the door thunk behind me. It, it was a shower of flies. Like, hundreds of large black flies came raining down on me and I ran out screaming and it was horrible and now I'm gonna have nightmares. <laughs> dare, we, dare we open the door? Yeah you let's can. <laughs> pop it open and let's see if there's... I'm not gonna look. I'm just gonna open it and let you look. I think you're making it up. There's no flies. Oh well, that's not true. I see two flies. Three there were a lot of flies. There are no flies there but... I don't know where they were, but they are gone. Look now. Oh, yeah, there Look at them all. There's like a hundred. Yes, they all came down when you slammed the door. Oh, dear God, that's horrifying. Run away, run away, burn it, burn it <laughs> fire, burn it now. Okay, well, we've made it back to where I said we were going before the whole porta potty incident. We're at the uh, site of the forestry lookout tower, and apparently, this is the 
Medicine Lodge Backcountry Hut. Reservations required. We don't have reservations, but we're not staying, so let's go check it out. Kind of a neat looking place. There's a mag um, keypad lock on the door on that one, so probably when you make your reservation, you get a code so you can come in here and uh, Oh, there's a road grader over here. Little different from the road grader that we uh, experienced on the way back uh, or in and back from head of the mountain lookout point there at the Prairie Plateau geocache. But can you imagine them plowing the roads up here using something like that? Probably being pulled by something like this. The Tom Trott Memorial Forestry Museum. Interesting little place. I see, you know, many of these exhibits have numbers on them. So probably somewhere you can find information that gives you more detail about what all these artifacts are. But here is the forestry lookout tower that we were talking about. And that was originally located back at that last geocache, now located here at the Forestry Museum. And the ladder is completely accessible, but as you can see up there, the entryway is padlocked, so... If it wasn't, I might be tempted to give it a shot. Emily's just going to look online and see if there's any information online about the Tom Trott Forestry Museum and whether we can find out what some of these artifacts are if there's like an online version of a brochure that tells you more about site number 11 this building which is the property of the Department of Lands and Forests trespassers will be prosecuted got to catch me first copper so I didn't find the official guide that says what all the numbered items are. However, I did find a little blurb about Tom Trott. He arrived in the Cypress Hills in June of 1980. His background was with the Royal Canadian Engineers and Alberta Forest Service. It served him well with numerous challenges he faced here as a parks forest officer. In his 16-year career, he developed a reputation of integrity, leadership, and having a sharp mind. Tom was well known for his sense of humor and ability to tell a story. His untimely death on September 10, 1996, prevented him from achieving his dream of turning the Lodge Fire Tower site into a museum. The museum and site is dedicated in the memory of Tom and the forest officers who preceded him. Tom Trot, backcountry hut, $100 a night, wood stove for heating, beds with vinyl mattresses, axe and shovel so that you can both kill and then bury your roommate, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what was attacking, eating, or destroying this door frame. Um, it could be the free range cattle that they graze, or it could be Sasquatch. Or vandals. Or vandals. I'm thinking Sasquatch is more likely. So undoubtedly there's a lot of history about these artifacts like this building and the fire tower and things that were missing uh, simply because we don't have a pamphlet or a brochure telling us anything about it. But still, very interesting spot. So we're working our way over towards Fort Walsh National Historic Site. We're not sure if we'll make it there or not, but we're kind of just picking our way over there through some of the back roads and we stumbled across this uh, marker slash cairn that we decided we should stop and check out. So it's probably hard for you to read, but it says the murder of Constable Greyburn. Constable Marmaduke Greyburn, Northwest Mounted Police, shot and killed by unknown persons in the Cypress Hills, November 17, 1879. He was the first mounted policeman killed by violence since the force was organized in 1873. Starchild, a blood Indian, was acquitted of the, or sorry, was accused of the murder 
but was acquitted in 1881. Interesting little historic site. I've heard of this before. I never knew we were going to be anywhere close to it, but it was nice to pop in and see it. Very cool spot, very quiet. Time to get back on the road. Okay, well, we never made it to Fort Walsh, which uh, it was just a matter of the roads were gravel and twisty, so it was going to be quite a slow drive. And uh, it's pouring rain, it's damp, it's cold. So that's going to wrap it up for our second day on the road. And we're just going to head back to the camper and hang out there and stay warm, stay dry. See you in the next episode. <laughs>